The main coastline is rugged. Stretch out, it's longer than California's, with great birding all the way to Canada. This is what America thinks Maine looks like in the winter. Here's what Maine really looks like. Most days are gorgeous and winter birding is awesome. Let's start with five places along the southern Maine coast. Hi, I'm Bob Duchesne and we're birding the southern Maine beaches today. First stop, Fort Foster, which is actually stop number one on the entire Maine birding trail. In Kittery, right around the corner is Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. Out to sea there is the entire southern coast of Maine. It's a great place to go birding. A lot of seabirds nest in Maine, and more come down from Canada to winter over. It gets pretty lively along the entire shoreline. Fort Foster was a uh, defense installation right up until World War II when it protected the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard. It's a great fallout spot now, so in migration season, all these bushes along the ocean's edge can get really busy. But in the winter, you really want to walk the ocean path right here. All right, tear yourself away. Next stop right up the coast is even better. We're in York. This is the Nubble. It's one of Maine's most famous lighthouses. And it's a place you have got to bird in winter. If you go nowhere else, this is one of those places you've got to go. The sea is full of ducks, scoters, eiders, long-tailed ducks, buffleheads. They're just everywhere out there. 54 common eiders, seven harlequin ducks, 12 white-winged scoter, 187 black scoters, 14 long-tailed ducks, three red-breasted mergansers, one redneck grebe, 13 herring gulls. Wait a minute, the next spot right up the coast is even better. This is Perkins Cove in Agunquit. It's the start of Marginal Way from the southern end, a mile-long path that's paved right along the ocean's edge. Birding along here is fantastic. It may be the best place in southern Maine to go birding. The walking is easy. The birds tend to be close to the rocks. Scoters and common eiders are abundant, and this is the best place to see harlequin ducks from the mainland. Keep an eye out for purple sandpipers, too. Save yourself plenty of time for marginal way in winter. It's just a short jump to spot number four. This is Weld's Beach. Along with a lot of the other southern Maine beaches, you can sometimes find shorebirds even in the coldest days in the dead of winter, sanderlings in particular. Wells Harbor in winter is an interesting place. Now, really, it's nothing more than a parking lot abutting the harbor. And everywhere along the edge of this harbor, there can be great sea ducks right close to the parking lot. Now, pay attention to the tide, because if it's too high, the whole marsh is going to be full of water. A lot of the birds can be rather distant. As the tide is going in or out, and it's constricted more, you'll find a lot of loons, red-breasted mergansers, common eiders, lots of scoters, uh, common golden eyes, and ducks and geese. All in this harbor, all in this channel as the water surges back and forth. Now, right near the entrance of the parking lot into Weld's Harbor, you'll find a path leading to the ocean right along the breakwater and right along the channel going out. It's a good place to check all the ducks that may be in the entire length of the channel as the tide is surging back and forth. And once you get out to the beach, you can check the breakwater for any roosting seabirds, uh, especially roosting shorebirds, and you can check the beach and you can check the ocean right there at the beach. Last stop is a big stop. This will eat up a big part of your day. Bitterford Pool. It is one of the best places in the entire state of Maine to go birding year round. The reason starts with this enormous tidal pool. It ebbs and flows uh, throughout the day, and so the conditions are always changing. At high tide, you'll find a lot of sea ducks in here. At low tide, during shorebird season, you'll find a lot of shorebirds along the edge. In winter, this is one of the places where snowy owls are most likely to be found in the state of Maine. The other thing about Bitterford Pool is it's not just one place. It's an assortment of birding opportunities located all around this tidal pool. So they have the outflow of the tidal pool we'll go to next. A lot of birds can congregate in there as the tide goes in and out. You've got an enormous half-moon beach here that can be good, interesting year-round. And then we've got the surf and the rocks and stuff right at the end of this road. So let's go check them out. So you're coming into Bitterford Pool, coming along the row of houses, the vacation homes that are here. Make sure you check the rooftops on the way by because owls, snowy owls, love to sit up there. If they're not there, they're often out in the grass somewhere, right next to the water's edge, just watching for prey. So right at the outflow of the pool itself, there's a tiny village, and there's also a tiny park, Vines Landing. 
And with just about any place that the tide flows in and out, there's usually ducks congregating there taking advantage of the food that washes back and forth. Loons in particular. Okay, good. You find your way all the way down to the ocean, right along Ocean Ave, which is the road that runs right parallel to the rocky point that encompasses Bitterford Pool. So you're done good. First, we're going to go to East Point Sanctuary. It's a small Audubon sanctuary that runs out onto this little point back here. So it's going to go buy some houses up this little path, past a golf course, and out onto the point. So you get out here and it's one big open area with vistas all around. Uh, you can walk a path around the edge. Probably better to go left around because that gets you over to the island first and generally that's where the tide is coming in and out. Best place to start looking. This is Wood Island. Never mind the lighthouse. Check for snowy owls over there. It can be there a lot. Sometimes in the building, more likely on the rocks. White winged scoter flying by. All three scoters are likely to be here. Common eiders will be here, long-tailed ducks, buffalo heads, uh, red-breasted mergansers, even common golden eyes are likely to be here at East Point Point. So here we are back on Ocean Avenue. This is going to be all about the rocks and the sheltered places. The rocks could have birds on them as well as seabirds around them. If you're really vigilant, especially a little further offshore, some of those more distant islands, there's a good chance of finding purple sandpipers, and I'm expecting to find some great cormorants roosting out there. Lastly, there's the sand beach at Bitterford Pool itself. Always fun to walk if you have enough time. And then, of course, there's the Half Moon Bay itself. Five stops along the southern main coast, and that's just the beginning.